it is Kayla and Dana with Tactical Response here for just another Medical Monday. I didn't know they were singing. Yeah, sometimes. Okay. When I feel like it. A little levity at the beginning because we're going to be discussing something that's a little bit of a hard pill to swallow. Uh, you're not going to live forever. <sighs> What should we do to prepare for that? Like Dana's an attorney. He's going to tell us the different forms that we need to make sure that all is well. Yeah. Um, at the end. So uh, uh, some of you may know, um, my mom passed away almost a year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my mom and my dad, my dad is still living, but my mom and my dad had done uh, a lot of work uh, in advance that made it a lot easier. Uh, one of the things that my parents did uh, was they prepared um, living will, durable power of attorney for health care, and uh, what's called an advanced directive. Um, these are three documents, legal documents, um, that basically make your wishes known with respect to uh, medical interventions to extend the your life. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't want to get too deep in the weeds with this stuff, but I would say there is no reason that you should not have all three. You should have all three. Um, the uh, in many states, Tennessee in particular, uh, let's start with the last one, the advanced directive. An advanced directive um, is essentially a checklist of things that um, conditions that you do not want to be saved from mm -hmm. uh, and measures that or, or that you might want to be saved from or measures that you might be willing to have applied to you to save you from one of the ones that you said you would be willing to be saved from. So it's kind of a two-part thing. Um, Real quick, some examples that he's talking about. Uh, do, or, do you or do you not want to be put on a feeding tube? Is right. that something that you're willing to live with? Right. These are quality of life conversations um, as well as extensions of life conversations. Right. So one of the... so. In Tennessee, there's a form that you can get that the state has actually prepared. So it'll be it'll be recognizable by any medical professional as such. Um, you can Google that. Uh, Advanced Directive Tennessee. Your state may have a similar form, but it's basically a fill-in-the-blanks form. You put in your name, and then for Tennessee, the one has... Um, I'll give you an example. Like, let's say you've been... Be let's say you are... A cancer patient, you've been treated for cancer, you end up in the hospital for cancer in what may be uh, your last your last rodeo, um, and then you have a heart attack. Uh, <laughs> or or uh, let's take the heart attack to the end. Okay, so if you're sitting there with a terminal condition of cancer that may kill you in several weeks, this advanced directive would tell the medical professionals, do you want us to do anything about the heart attack? Yes or no, for example. Or it could be you go in with cancer and they tell you, oh, well, um, now you have some other condition that might also kill you. Do you want to undertake any new treatment for that? So the, 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 the two parts of the puzzle fit together to kind of identify what you are willing to have treated and what treatments you're willing to have given for whatever ones you're willing to have treated. Uh, and you can literally just say none of the above. On that note, patients cannot order medical care. They can only accept it or refuse it. So just because you think, hey, they should treat this thing doesn't mean the doctor's going to. Right. They're, they are still going to have a say in it. So please keep in mind, you cannot order medical care. Right. You can only refuse or accept it. So you're not telling people what to do. You're you're checking yes or no. Right. Um, so that happened in our in our family. Um, we my mother was dying of both Parkinson's and colon cancer and one of them was going to kill her in the very near future. And eventually um, the hospitalist came in and said, we've done what we can do here. Mm -hmm. So you can't, even if we had said, well, well, we want more and more and more, they would have been like, no. However, we were willing to say no feeding tube, for example, because a feeding tube would have extended her life past the point that it was otherwise going to end. So uh, that's, a, that's an advanced directive or an advanced care plan some uh, some terminology may be a little different, but that's what that is. Um, a durable power of attorney for health care. And, and think of it this way. A, a An advanced directive is sort of the person speaking to um, the doctor, the patient speaking to the doctor through a third person. A durable power of and, and expressing the patient's preference. A durable power of attorney for health care is more conceptually like 
I give Kayla the right to make my decisions. I don't even know what they might, what the circumstances might be at the time, but I'm going to let Kayla make those choices for me. And the choices that I'm allowing her to make include, and again, it's typically done in sort of a checklist fashion, but um, I'm just going to give Kayla the authority to make those choices when and if they come up. Um, so a durable power of attorney for healthcare is what it sounds like. It's durable, meaning I don't have to be awake to authorize it. I've already, I don't have to be conscious. I don't have to be cognizant of the situation. I don't have to be um, capable of making the decision. It's durable. It survives past the point that I can make those decisions deliberately and knowingly and with full and infor with fully informed consent. Um, the person you are giving durable health care power of attorney to should know your wishes. Right. Which is why you you, <laughs> you should do both. Right. Living will, right. Uh, advanced directives, and right. a durable health care right. power of so, attorney. Um, and then a living will goes hand in hand with these, yeah. and they all sort of backstop one another. The reality is that until you're standing there looking at a nurse or a doctor, telling them do or do not do uh, what you're offering, um, you don't really know what which one of these documents is going to be the one that the doctor or the nurse says, aha, OK, now I accept your direction. So mm -hmm. I would say that you want to put together, put these together um, with respect to the durable power of attorney for healthcare and the living will. Um, mo uh, 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 a, a probate and estate planning lawyer typically offers a package. It'll have a will, which is what you think it is, right? It'll give my stuff to whoever. You'll have a will, and frequently they include in that a durable power of attorney for healthcare and a living will um, in sort of a package. So if you haven't done any of this, you should. Uh, I don't care if you're 22 or 62. Um, you don't want your loved ones left without this kind of direction, and you definitely don't want your loved ones arguing with healthcare professionals. I know what he or she wanted. I'm his or her husband or wife. Um, I know what they wanted. And the doctor's going to be like, that's great. All you need is a piece of paper. You got one of these pieces of paper that we know what they are. Um, so you don't want to have your, your, your loved ones struggling with that stuff. So I would say if you, you, and you should, if you can get an advanced directive off the internet, fine, but look, go pay a professional. This is worth getting done. Right. Um, so uh, I'd like to discuss a couple of things that you might find in the advanced directives. There is a DNR, DNI, and a DNT. A DNR only says that they will not try to resuscitate your heart to make it continue beating if it stops on its own. A DNI, do not intubate, means that they are not going to try to breathe for you. And then a DNT is don't treat anything. And you can go as like all three or pieces of each of these right. as you want to. So for the, like the DNT, they can say like DNT for say cancer. So they're no longer receiving chemo. They're no longer receiving any medications for it. Um, but I'd still like to be treated for the pain, right. just pa not the cancer. Palliative care. Yes. So uh, please... In include like go into as much detail as you can on these things right. to leave as few questions for your family to have to kick themselves over not knowing later. Yeah, trust me when I tell you that. <laughs> yeah, let's say in, in my case it was my mother. So my father, me, my sister, and my wife are all, you know, necessary. Obviously, we're all right there in the middle of it. Um, it would not have been good for the four of us to have to debate what my mother wanted while she was. Um, winding down the end of her life. So uh, do your family a favor. Mm -hmm. um, make your wishes known. Um, my mother started telling us what her wishes were 25 years ago when she got diagnosed with Parkinson's. So um, there was no doubt in our mind. What I would tell you is, even when there is no doubt in your mind, executing the decision that you know they want made is not easier. Um, so it's helpful to have that those conversations, those papers, those plans in place um, so that one of your loved ones can look at the other one and say, this, you know what they wanted, right? Like, you know, we had this conversation, we talked about it, here's the papers. This is not easy, but this is what they wanted. Uh, as a parting note, 
uh, guys, this is a very personal decision. One should be one that should be made, like Dana was just saying, when you are of healthy mind and body. These are not decisions that uh, come easy. So when everything is good, you should think about what quality of life you want and what that looks like for you. So uh, again, needs to be made when you are healthy, mind and body, but leave room for changes for extenuating circumstances. Right now I'm 33 years old. So uh, please resuscitate me. <laughs> please resuscitate me. <laughs> um, please treat. Uh, intubation is one that I've, I have discussed, like went into more detail on, been more specific. If it's something that I can recover from, intubate me. If it's not, don't. <laughs> right. Like, and broad spectrum, like if you're having to get to the nitty gritty, like, yeah, but what's the chances? Like, nah, nope. Let's right. sleep. Yeah. Unless they're like, no, all we need is like, she needs to be put on the vent. Like, a, there may be a chance she doesn't, but I want the odds in my favor if you're going to intubate. Those are my personal decisions. Yeah, don't be, don't 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 bring me back and make me mad at you for doing it. But <laughs> let's say uh, 33 years old, and I find out that I have uh, ovarian cancer that's progressed to all parts of my body. I'm gonna go ahead and make the changes then, as soon as I find out. Right. Like, hey, we're we're not gonna do these other things because my cancer is terminal. I, I don't have cancer, guys. This is an example. A hypothetical. <laughs> hypothetical. Uh, if I if I had a terminal illness, then I wouldn't want those things done. CPR is painful. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up and I wasn't sure why I was so sore, and then I remembered. Yeah. All righty, guys. Remember your responsibility to be ready for the fight and the end. I, I guess it ends. <laughs> At some point, <laughs> it does end. Yeah, you're responsibly really ready I for caught the, you, didn't Yeah, it, it did. Like, wow. So your responsibi responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends until the end. I guess that's it. Yeah, there, there is an end to all of this. Yeah. All right, make the plan.